Welcome, guys, to Dash Studios. Yes. First time here. Yeah, first time here. We just gave you this a tour. What do you think about it? This place is wild. I feel like I'm in like Pablo Escobar's mansion. <laughs> we it's already. Got, it's got hidden rooms. Yeah, we found the hidden rooms and you know. lights. Yep. Got everything yeah. in here. Love it. And we're right here on Hollywood Boulevard. It's wild. I know we're in the heart of Hollywood here at the Dash Studios. Welcome everybody. I'm here with the awesome DJ producer duo side piece. We got Ricky in the corner. What's up? What's better up? known as Nitty Gritty. And over here we got Dylan, better known as Party Favor. What's up, guys? We're, you know what? Great, great intro. We need oh, you to come everywhere you. with us. Yeah, so right. Yeah, she has like the just, real yeah. like yeah. in this corner. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This corner right over here. yeah. Well, I have to say that I'm very, very happy for you guys for the fact that you're nominated to a Grammy. Woo! I know, that's pretty crazy given the fact that you guys joined forces only a year and change ago. That's yeah. pretty bananas. A year and a half ago, yeah. 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 This is wild. <laughs> <laughs> we don't even know, yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, we, it, it was kind of a soft, I mean, it was a soft launch. We just started working on music and we hit up our management and like, hey, you know, I think we got something here and... Yeah, I don't even think we had, we didn't have like anything booked or anything ready like from fall of 2019. Just music really, it was just like one FaceTime call, have the name set up, have a couple songs, like the songs that you're about to hear and, and On My Mind and Temptation, like we've had those ready to go since the first call. So it's like crazy oh, wow. to see like how immediate we both knew. It was just like, yo, this is a great project. Let's just see, no expectations, nothing, you know, not like trying to be anything, just like let's put out good music and see what happens. Because you guys both had, have and had very successful careers individually. How did you guys meet? And then you just, why did you decide to become a duo? Um, we, I just, I was a big uh, fan of his music. And I, I had had this idea to make a house side project for like years. And I reached out to Ricky thinking like, hey, like, you know, here's an idea. Like, you want to do this? And we played some music for each other. And like he said, it was like he the stuff he showed me i'm like wait a second okay wait <laughs> i think wait let me let me show you something and then he showed me and they were like okay i think we got something here this is weird we both have all these records ready to go that then you know then ricky added his sauce and v vice versa and it's like okay something's crazy you know it was just meant to be and so. did you guys meet through instagram or yeah or i think we like followed each other on twitter but it wow. wasn't like immediate i think we like you know sent each other edits and stuff or you know he had I had like maybe my lights bootleg and he he had Wawa come out and there's just like these random, you know, party favorite nitty gritty records. And then it was just complete opposite when, like he said, he was like, oh, by the way, I make Tech House. And I was like, I make Tech House. And then <laughs> we, I, we were both thinking, because I was originally going to be like, yeah, I wanted to make this project and call it Side Project as a joke. Right. And then he was like, yo, what about Side Piece? And I was like, ding, 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 ding. Let's I go. Know. Ready to go. That's it. I love when things like that happen because it's just super organic. Yeah. And then... The fact that you guys get nominated for, for a Grammy again, that's bananas. I'm not going to ask you, how does it feel? Because obviously it must feel fucking amazing. I'm yep. not going to ask you, like, did you expect this? Because I assume you didn't, right? Pretty unexpected. But, right? But, you know, obviously you want to win. Obviously we're all rooting for you here at Dash. But how do you keep, you know, the expectations kind of real? Uh, I think over time, like... We've had, like you said, we have had careers before this, mm -hmm. so you get used to, oh, I want to have this song be big and this, you know, festival slot be a big slot. So, like, you kind of get good at managing expectations, and I think we're both in a pretty mature state of, like, you know, we're not just super fresh green artists. We're like, oh, my God, we didn't get that song. That It wasn't a big song. Darn it. Like, we're kind of used to it, so I'm super hyper and excited about it, and if we don't win, I'm still going to be happy. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think that there's something special about this project, and I've felt it since we first got together. And I think that it's felt great, too, I think because, touching on what he was saying, is that there's a little bit, at least for me, I always kind of feel like there's a little bit less pressure to deliver a certain way because I think I, I know I can count on him, and I think he feels the same way. So Absolutely. it kind of helps alleviate the whole process, and it makes it like we can just have fun because we're focused on like one specific genre and style and you know making it our own. So you're nominated for the hit... On my mind, which was a collaboration with Diplo, who you yeah. all know of. So some people haven't heard of him. So yeah. If you <laughs> haven't, dude, get go on living. We gotta live life. We gotta. He's know everywhere. Diplo He's, is. everywhere. He's, He's everywhere. He's everywhere. He's yeah. everywhere. Random white dude. <laughs> <laughs> How did you? What was like the biggest learning from working with Diplo? I think he's a. Uh, I've said this in pretty much every interview. He's he's really a music library, 
where that dude, like most of the time when I go to work at his house, you just, you walk in, you see all his records. You go downstairs, you see, you know, pianos and guitars everywhere. So it's just somebody that has accumulated years and years and years of music from every genre. And that's pretty much how On My Mind was started is because, you know, there's just random beat laying around. And then he was like, hey, put this vocal on it. And so that's how I always think of it with, with him. The best producers sometimes aren't the ones physically touching everything all the time. It's someone who can envision how things go together. And, you know, by putting, you know, this producer or this guitarist with this singer and, you know, bringing these people or this this sound and this style together, sometimes having that vision is more important than who is sit physically touching the keys that moment mm -hmm. or, you know, making the drum beat on this thing. Because, you know, you look at someone like Rick Rubin, who's who's literally touched everything under the sun and made turn into gold, and he doesn't sit there with the guitar himself. But he knows how to make people work together really well. And I feel like Wes Diplo does that really, really well. So he just, he's able to kind of see one step ahead of what he wants to do. You guys both mentioned during this interview, you know, how it just kind of like organically happened. Mm -hmm. But Ricky, what do you think Dylan brings to the project? And Dylan, what do you think Ricky brings to the project? I mean, it's pretty, it's, it's like a 50-50 thing in terms of like, what I really enjoy about collaborating with Dylan is that I feel like we give each other the opportunity to have either role. So like he said, where somebody can be more the overall thinker and somebody's on the computer. So like, I don't know, like the other day in the studio, like he's actually more sitting on the computer that day and, and doing this beat and stuff. And then I was thinking of ideas outside of it, kind of being more behind it. And then vice versa, there'll be days where I'm on the computer sitting there making this baseline drums. And he's like, yo, ch change it like this. So like, it's always fun to be able to have both sides of producing with somebody that can do both. Like, I feel like we both can just sit there and make the beat or we can be the person behind thinking of a couple like ideas to help with it. I think uh, I love working with him in the sense that he's really fast at producing. So like, I, th I think I'm fast, but I, when I'm working with him, I'm like, <laughs> man, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm <laughs> like a, a, like, yeah, like tortoise in the hair. Uh, but it's, I think I, what's great is that kind of touching what he said is that he, it's like, it sounds cheesy, but it's almost like we finish each other's sentences sometimes. And you know, Aww. when I, when I, when I, when I have an idea, I know that I can express it to him, and I think that I that I know that he has the ability to sometimes achieve something that maybe would have taken me a lot longer to do, or you know whatever. So I think it's been a, a great, yeah, it's been great. So "Wanna See You" was the hit that put you guys in the map. It was the first single that you guys put out there. What does that song mean to you guys? That one was fun. I, like I just remember a a very balanced kind of just, we both sat there and, and like I said, where there was times where I was on the computer and then he was on the computer and we just started adding sounds and just, I don't know, it's kind of like a birthplace type of record. So it's kind of just a nostalgic one for me. Yeah, it was our, it was our introduction to the world, you know, because we, we technically kind of had to get it out because we had On My Mind coming up and we, we didn't, I, I think we kind of wanted to get something out so it wasn't like our first song was On My Mind, um, but it ended up coming together really cool, like you said. I mean, it was it's a it's a fun one. I think the drums are fun. People still like it, so I think it was a good introduction to side piece. Were you were you just like holding on to on my mind because you knew it was something special? Well, yeah, but I mean that was I mean technically since Diplo's you know Diplo's name's first on that song, so he kind of had priority on when he when he wanted to release it right. and, and where. So I think we were kind of yeah, it's just kind of a bit you know yeah. not not a good or bad way. The industry is just. A, a business so yeah i didn't mean to, that in a bad sense yeah, i was just saying we, we were it wasn't up to us it wasn't like yeah. we were calling all the shots on like oh, okay we're gonna release on this thursday and whatever yeah. so but we we just wanted to make sure that we had something out there in the world so people were like oh i've seen this name heard this name and know what they're about i mean in all sincerity you guys have worked with diplo um you're also part of the label pete tong's label ffrr and i actually heard you guys not that like a couple of days ago you were on bbc's pete tong's show yeah yeah I'm like, forget about the Grammys, guys. You already made it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's yeah, right? pretty big. Speaking of Pete Tong, like, I remember we we had a, like, Zoom call, and he was just, like, it was kind of a, like, legendary, like, for I mean, both of us. that voice with that accent, yeah. you were like, Pete Tong. This is yeah. Pete Tong. Yeah. You know, yeah, it yeah. was just, like, he sounded like that super down-to-earth guy. Yeah. Um, that was a really just enjoyable time to be like, oh, shit, we're really here with Pete Tong. It's, like, fun. You know, he's a legend. For sure. You know, I'm sure you guys miss that energy that vibration of seeing people jumping sweating being there for you dancing their asses off and obviously you haven't had a chance to do that because of covid what is it that you miss the most of that and what festivals do you want to hit right when they start opening up 
All of them. <laughs> yeah, all, yeah, all of them. I think I think it's cool. I, I think I'm excited for this IP shows because it's it's so different than the Party Favor show or the or the Nitty show. And in I think you know, house music. What I love is about the groove. It's about the rhythm. It's about t- being together, and not necessarily jumping or you know head banging or whatever. But I think it, and it's going to be fun to kind of play those shows and then be able to go do our other shows. We kind of get the best of all worlds. Um, but I, yeah, all of them. It's I like we, refreshing. We're ready. We were so we had all these shows planned, you know, for 2020, and you know they all every, just like everybody got canceled and every wake walk of life. But I think we're ready now. Yeah, it'll be yeah. it'll be fun. I, I actually what he just said where we get party favor nitty gritty shows, and then side piece. It'll be like because you know I go so hard and hurt my neck and I don't know I just mosh pits all that stuff. So it'll be nice to have the best of both worlds where I'm. I wake up and I'm not sore because I just, you know, I got to play some house and, and dance a little bit. And then it'll make me miss the mosh pitting. And then I'll go do that. So it's like, you know, 50-50. You can give, you, you can give your neck a break. Yeah, exactly. From banging, yeah. Getting old. Yeah, thing, Ricky. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you guys think DJs are underappreciated or overappreciated in the industry? Under or over? Um, can, are we grouping DJ and producer in one or just DJ? Just DJs. Okay. Hmm. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's hard because I think that Unfortunately, I think that in some in some instances, there are still people that think, you know, that DJing is not a serious, you know, like art form or whatever. And I think that that, Wait, that it is <laughs> 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 exactly, yeah. Um, but I think that you know that's not really a conversation. That's like a long conversation itself. But I think that uh, I don't know. I don't think that they're underappreciated by any means. I mean, I think that you look everywhere we go now. I mean, you have wedding DJs. You've got DJs in the club. You've got DJs at festivals. There's DJs. Is, in the other room, you know. <laughs> so I think as long as it's like a creative art form version of DJing, that style is underappreciated. Versus, you know, if you just are like when you're a kid, you're like, oh, I just want to go play songs. Like, you know, everybody kind of wants to do that. But when you actually put your all into it, and like those people that are really like, yo, I'm putting 100% into DJing, those people I feel like can be underappreciated sometimes. And like, how did you guys start DJing? Because I know one of you wanted to be an actor. Was it you? Uh, yes. But that was, yeah, that was when I was young, young. Um, I started DJing in college uh, to, to throw parties in college. I uh, just did it for fun. You I just thought, needed, needed an excuse to party. Might kind of, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I always wanted to, when I was when I was really young, I wanted to, I could never afford turntables. And so when I got a chance, when everything started going digital, we kind of had these little, little decks that could hook in your computer. And this is back in like 20, you know, 20, 2009 or so, whenever I got the first one at, and it was like some crappy, you know, new mark. I don't remember what brand it is. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was just hooked up at USB. And I think that was the first time when I was like, wow, I can actually now do something without having to, you know, get full blown Technics and get, you know, all my rain equipment and everything. So that's how I started it. And it just kind of evolved from there. My, my story is more like a producing and music first. And then I saw how like, to play my electronic music, I had to be a DJ. And I was like, uh-oh, I didn't know how to do this. Because I was like, yeah, I could get up there and play drums and play guitar. But like, it is, it's not an easy thing to learn to DJ the correct way and get people hyped. So like, you know, Jeremy's my f- videographer for since the beginning. And he used to be like, yeah, shout you were, sh- shout out Acre Media. But he used to be like, yeah, dude, when I first saw you, you were super awkward up there. And I was like, shut up, your videos suck. But like, <laughs> like, be like I, it's not easy to be a performer. Hey, so it's tough I, love. Yeah, it's tough Look love. Look at you now. <laughs> yeah, you gotta learn from So you gotta him. thank him for exactly. all, his, all gotta, your success. Gotta, yeah. gotta thank Acre Media for that. But um, yeah, it's kind of like learning to be a performer in a sense was secondary for me. And then once I discovered how fun it was to have these moments and of energy by playing the songs, it was like, you know, they, they complete each other, so. And it's probably more fun to be yourself up there than being an actor pretending to be someone else. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, I think that the I think that the acting thing made me feel very comfortable on stage. Mm-hmm. So I think that I that transition going from, you know, being on stage to that. But I mean, I I've had much more success uh, as a DJ than I <laughs> than I did ever as an actor. So yeah, I'm one of the many failed actor stories in in in, uh, in L.A. Yeah. And then you're originally from New York, but you born were there, yeah. You're born in New York, but raised in Park City, Utah, which is uh, yes. very far away from the club scene. Yes, we do have <laughs> Sundance Film Festival though, which is amazing. That's so. true. That's true. Um, yeah, it was. But how did that like growing up influence your music, or did it actually push you to be more creative and different from back then? 
Um, it's a good question. I mean, I, I grew up with my parents. Uh, my parents are both artists. So my parents, I grew up always around all types of music and lots of rock and roll, lots of kind of wild stuff. I was, you know, I was like one of my favorite, you know, guys when I was young was uh, David Bowie. And, you know, so when I was a little kid. And I always used to love him because he was, you know, flamboyant and he had such a strong vision of like who he was. And I think that, uh, you know, being around that, honestly, I never thought I'd do music. I mean, I didn't play any instruments. I, I, I had piano lessons when I was in like middle school and I hated them and I should have stuck with that. I took piano too uh, and I hated it. Yeah. I should have stuck. I and also I think, quit the yeah. piano, yeah. And I think it was just like, it's, just it's, blame it, on the piano. it <laughs> was a weird thing where I wanted to be in film and then I wanted to be in film production and by all these connections and things in my life happening, it just happened to kind of lead me down this path that I wasn't, you know, trying for. Right. So. And then Ricky, you were born and, and raised in Florida? So I, I grew up in, Pen I was born in Pennsylvania, and then I moved to Haiti because my parents were missionaries there. And then my best friend went to Miami, and I was like, I'm gonna go to Florida. Like, and that's how I was, now I've been there for almost 10 years. Are you so. both Mormon? I, my, <laughs> no, my parents are Christian. No. Okay. So okay. yeah, I, I, I've learned drums, guitar, piano, more in the church. Like the lessons was tough, but then my ear just kind of like, you know, faked it. And then I kind of learned it from there. I'm not Mormon. Okay. No, <laughs> we, like, we just happened to live there. Yeah. City, but yeah, yeah. You were one of the few. Well, yeah, Park City is actually not very Mormon. Um, no. And Salt Lake itself is not. But uh, yeah, no, we just moved. There. Great place to live, to grow up, as you know, to, to raise kids. Of, yeah, yeah, I was yeah. just there like three weeks ago. Park City is gorgeous. And Salt Lake City. Shout out to Mormons, though. No, nothing against no, Mormons. No, nothing against them yeah. at all. <laughs> just, I was just out of curiosity, because this is a very different world from yeah, yeah. that religion. Anyway, we don't have to go that route. No, no. But um, politics next. I, Let's I'm go. I'm interested. Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> I told you this would be a very serious conversation, guys. But okay, how long were you in Haiti for? I was there for like nine years, but my parents were there for almost like 15, 16 years. And how was that? That's crazy. I mean, I'm Caribbean. I'm Puerto Rican. Yeah, so yeah. Like Islanders, there's a different vibe to us for sure. And I'm sure you bring Haiti has a beautiful. Place. Yeah, yeah. In terms of their their music, mm -hmm. the, the the livelihood, um, how do you bring that to your project? I think it, it's interesting that I was so, uh, like I guess separated from American culture when I was being raised. Like I don't know like all the SpongeBob references or like I was like, oh wait, Britney Spears had a big song in two thousand two. Like who who knew? So I would basically have to go on like LimeWire and stuff and YouTube and wait for these songs to load and download one at a time, and then I would kind of discover something like Slipknot where I was like, whoa, wow, metal, shap, this shap is crazy. Slipknot. And then, you know, once you're like discovering that, obviously I was around all this Haitian music and and like the rhythms there, it's called compa. It's like, it's just very, has that kind of style. So that was like already there for me. So I was actually searching outside of it because I was there. I was, right. I was hearing it so much that I was like, oh, I'm used to this. Let me go. So it was weird that most people would think of like, oh, Britney Spears, that's normal. I'm going to go to like Haitian music. I've never heard that, but I was like, oh, I'm used to Haitian music. Let me go to American culture and listen to, you know, rock, metal, hip hop and all this stuff. So like it was kind of a weird discovery of music for me in a sense. But I guess it's cool because now I have the appreciation for everything because I really had to search for it myself in a sense. That's so interesting. Are you guys fans of Arcade Fire by any chance? Oh, yeah. yeah. OK, so she's Haitian. And she brings a lot of Haitian culture. I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know that either, yeah, actually. Yeah. I had yeah, no idea. Yep. Learn something new every day. Yeah. yeah. So um, she brings a lot of that rhythm yeah. into, into the songs in a very weird way because yeah. Arcade Fire is, you know, They're like, like indie. Yeah, yeah, indie, yeah, indie you know, alternative. Wow, cool. I have no idea. That's really cool. Yeah. All right. So now we're um, we're at the stage in the show. The show is called Truth and Tunes. So okay. we already kind of know the truth about you guys. But now yes. we're going to dig into those five songs that have influenced you guys in your career or your life. And because it's two of you, we're going to go one, 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 and then I need one song, that fifth song, to be one that you guys both agree on. Right? Perfect. So we're going to start with um, Ricky. And you chose 715 Creeks by Bonnie Iver. And I'm glad I said his name right, mm -hmm. because that band's name is butchered all the time. Um, it's a super short song. It's only two minutes and twelve. Yeah. But it's very Bon Iver like in terms that it's very like dramatic. But but I don't. All of his songs I feel are really touch your heart. They're very emotional, you know. So um, why the song? That like that's an honest song. It's embarrassing, but like I've definitely cried to that song like four or five times just because like when I hear 
and it's in a weird way it's very electronic because he, he basically made his own vocoder and he played that live in a one like i just researched like a lot about him because he's one of my favorite artists so he literally played something electronically but he did it live so it's like taking something electronic and making it acoustic and live at the same time and obviously the words are just heart wrenching and i don't know just like the whole i guess aesthetic of the song is just something that i love electronic music and then classic vocal work where it's, it's just him his voice playing around with his voice which you know the human voice is the end all be all of all yes. music so with that song an instrument yeah that's just like a life-changing song for me i heard that i was like i will literally never forget this song you know what i mean that's amazing um so 715 is actually actually the area code of north wisconsin and that's where he's from yeah. yeah that's where he's from yep. so because I, I was trying to do some research on mm -hmm. you know i don't blame you for crying to it i think any bunny verse song i Try to because they're all like heart wrenching. Yeah, yeah. He, have you seen Have you seen them live? No, that's one of my dreams for sure. I cannot wait. They come. Oh, really? I was so excited to see them. I was like, yes. And then I, they headlined Coachella a couple years ago. Yeah. I left early. It's It's probably a Just mood thing. It's, right. It's not like a festival. maybe not a festival. Right. It's more for like an intimate. An int yeah, that's where I would I would go and I would like drink some wine and just sit there and experience it no dancing nothing i just want to hear them do their art that's it but we love you and i'll see you anytime just maybe in a different form <laughs> all right so here it is bonnie burr um and the song is 715 creek do you want me to say something actually i'll say something can we get a kleenex for ricky oh do i no 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 <laughs> I was like, what's he's like, he's like, oh, the song? Oh cry. my gosh. I was so worried. I was like, on video, like, I got a booger problem sometimes, but I was like, right now, damn. <laughs> <laughs> for your tears, for your tears. But <laughs> my tears are dripping onto the microphone right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, really? That was really funny. Okay, so that was Bonnie Burr. How do you feel? Are you, are you melancholic now? Are you yeah, no, I mean, every, shedding a tear? You know, I have to we be by are. myself to be crying, but you know, when I'm with you guys, I'll be fine. I'll be all right. All right. I'm cool. crying inside. Yeah. Had you heard that song before? Does he play yes, it all the time? Yes, I love, yeah, I love Bonnie Bear. Yeah. Cool. Well, now we're on to you, Dylan, and your song is Genesis by the French electronic duo Justice. Who yes. Are amazing. Why this song? So this song was like as as a special place in my heart in in a funny way because it also was a huge segue for me into dance music as we know it. Um, that song came out I believe 2007, uh, which was the year I graduated high school and I was freshman year in college. And at the time when I was in college down in uh, Orange County here in California at Chapman University, like you know, even though there there was barely any dance music on the radio. I mean, the closest thing was like David Guetta or you know Black Eyed Peas, you know, which is kind of <laughs> But they were, but they were smart because you know they were taking what was working in Europe and making it Americanized. Right. And so I was hearing a lot of those songs on the record, you know, thing, or I would listen to shows from like, you know, you know, radio DJs on Saturday night or something like that. And I'm like, I really like the beats behind, you know, they were taking these, you know, electronic beats from, the, you know, the UK or you know parts of Europe, or, you know, French, uh, excuse me, France, you know, anywhere. And I was hearing all this production. And I'm like, I love this. The energy is crazy. It doesn't sound like anything here in the states. And so I started really getting into it and and and, and listening to it. And I and I fell in love with Justice and the, the sound, the ability to take the funk elements of the bass line of that song, the distortion of it, and the groove of it. Still, it was unlike anything I remember ever hearing. And it just was. It started me on a long path of loving dance music. And here we are. They're very unique. Have you seen them live? I sure have. They're so amazing. And those the, the, their stage is always super cool. Great choice. All right, so here it is. Do you want to toss it? Yes, this is Genesis by Justice. Okay. Um, all right, so now we bring it back. Do you want to bring it back? Me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was <laughs> Genesis by Justice, and we're here in Dash Radio Eww. with Side Piece. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun, yeah, dun. thanks. All right, back to you, Ricky. I had never heard this song, so thank you for... Nobody has, it's okay. okay <laughs> I was like, I've never heard this song. So it's called Me versus Maradona versus Elvis, and it's by Brand New. And it was from their album Deja and Zendu yep. from 2003. What? Okay. <laughs> the song is about the lead singer, whose name is Jesse. Mm -hmm. It's his fear that 
one day everything will burn out and he'll fall asleep. Yeah, I mean, Did I don't see that in that song. Yeah, I don't even. There's, I've listened to that. That's so that's pretty much one of my favorite albums of all time. So it was like I was gonna pick one from it. it, it I just that that's one of the songs that I can just listen to like over and over. Like I'm a originally very into that Taking Back Sunday brand new era of music is one of my all time favorites. So it's more just like I was being completely honest with myself. Like I was like, what are life changing songs? And like this is another one. Like it just reminds me of growing up and wanting to feel sad, but it makes you feel better in a weird way. Like why does that work? But Cathartic, it does. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's just I don't know. It made me feel better. So like the whole like, the whole album is like your favorite song. Yeah, I mean much. it's tough. Yeah, that. But I also love that because that's that's a song specifically in the title that describes something in my life where it's like you know he has a, a the, one of the best soccer players of all time and one of the best musicians and you know as a kid like growing up in Haiti and playing soccer and listening to brand new and listening to that song in a country that doesn't play that type of music it's just a very you know it, it gives me memories of me kind of like growing up and listening to that so I guess it's not necessarily about how much I would always think about the song and its meaning it's just like I bet if I listen to it now I would have different feelings of what the words say but I used to just sing the words blindly and enjoy it versus like the Bonnie Vare one I I was older when I listened to it so I thought about the words but back then I was just like yeah sad boy music but now it would probably hit me harder <laughs> so I don't know it's just like that whole album it's it's, it's been my background on my phone and my computer for years oh, so wow. it's like it's just that that record is something like meaningful to me like the artwork of it is just like so it's just a whole nother thing besides just that song I guess for me why it's so like you know a song for music me to has pick. that amazing way of like that you can always remember the feeling that it made you feel yeah. first time you know and, all and that. that's why you know when I thought about the concept of this show truth and tunes I was like you know I interview musicians for a living and I love interviewing them but let's do something different and I'm like okay what connects us whether you're a musician or not it's music and there's always that one or two or three songs that when you listen to them it just transports you to that first time you heard them or you know, it reminds you of your mom, and that's kind of like I wanted to mm -hmm. to provoke in my guests. So um. that's absolutely that song for me, and it's, I guess it's funny as side piece. We're talking about, you know, we make tech house and and house music, but it's it's funny how the music that I grew up on it didn't really matter if it sounded like dance or rock or anything. It's just like that still affected me learning how to play music, absolutely, and in turn brought me to then wow, I love producing. You know, just because I enjoy listening to something like Brand New, me producing house music, I most of the time can enjoy that more than some of the stuff that I make, like I listen to. There's, I like to separate between mm -hmm. enjoying music and creating it. So it's like, right. even though it might sound, why, why does it Tech House The do, Joker. Dude, Joker, Joker is right here. Let's go. What? That's a great one. <laughs> wow. And he's got the cigarette and everything. Oh, and the totally Coke can. And the Coke can. That's totally legendary. Oh, he's go, oh, he's going up to he's going up to Hollywood. That's Island, like literally huh? Joaquin. Told Keen you guys, Phoenix. we're in oh, yeah. the heart of Hollywood. He's totally right going now. up to uh, Grom and Chinese Theater for sure. Oh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Anyway, but um, no, I, I was gonna say that I love the, the the fact that you guys gave it some thought. You know, and you, you brought in these very different songs, and one some, something that's like very particular too, which I love, is that whenever I interview musicians for this show. You learn so much about their influences, and most of the time it sounds very different yep. from the music that they play. Absolutely. And it, it's probably because of what you just mentioned. Yeah, Sometimes yeah. You, wanna... you like to separate yourself right. from creating, you know, because one part's the job, and then one part is, you know, oh, I'm a fan too of a lot of, of bands and artists. Yeah. To you as Ricky. <laughs> I thought you were going to say true. something else. Oh. <laughs> that, it's true. It's true. It's well, my next song is completely unlike anything that's like well, we side gotta, piece. Wait, yeah. We gotta toss to his song first. Oh yes, of course. Yeah. Yes. Ricky, you want to toss to it? Okay, so this you is. Gotta look at the, make oh, love oh, to we're, the we're doing. Yeah. So this is me versus Mar Maradona versus Ooh. Elvis. Bravo, bravo. Bravo. Okay, we come back to it. Do you want to say something about it? I so, should go with that. Diego so, Maradona. Diego Maradona. Goal. Goal. That was a goal of a song. Yeah. It is. All right. Okay. Now we're on to you. Yes. So it's a classic. We have all heard this song or a version of this song, and it's Led Zeppelin's Stairway to Heaven. Why this beauty of a song? Yeah. So you know, obviously, this is such a a, a well-known song and one of the one of the classics. But I think you know, for me, this song was. I remember this song like really touching me the first couple times I heard it, and I remember exactly where I was the first time. It was in my living room at home. 
with my parents and they put it on. And that whole album, first off, is their best album. Um, but the way that that song takes you on a journey and and the lyrics, the melodies, everything about that song, I, I can still listen to it and it never gets old. And I think, you know, for me, kind of what he was saying, it's not really necessarily like, it's actually, you know, it's not even necessarily my favorite song. It's not like, you know, I, I wouldn't say that even Led Zeppelin's my favorite band. Right. It's but like there's, you listen to it to me, day. it just was the time in my life when I heard it and the sheer musical prowess of that band showcasing their skill. And I think it just, the storytelling in it and the feeling, I mean, you know, it sounds cheesy, but to me, like music that has a, that gives you a feeling or a sweeping feeling or emotion. I love listening to classical music. So to me, it gives me that feeling. So it's like, yeah. It's, it's a definitely little, a, a song that takes you on a journey. Yeah. Yes. It it's is. like seven minutes long. So here it is. <laughs> Here we go. You heard it here first, right here on Dash Radio. Actually, you didn't hear it here first. You heard it probably five million times the in premiere. your life. <laughs> the premiere for the first time hearing <laughs> Stairway to Heaven by Les Zeppelin. Am I outring it? Oh. No, that's great. We can, I mean, we can cut it through halfway. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was Stairway to Heaven by Les Zeppelin. If you haven't ever heard that song before, you're welcome. <laughs> I know, right? If you for live sure. under a rock, yes. So we go from one classic to the next classic, and this song was chosen by both of you. So I want to know how that process went of choosing a song together that has bo influenced both of you. I think this one, I w because I was so focused on like myself personally on the first two, I was like, man, what's something we can both agree had an effect on like side piece and stuff, and also us together. And I mean, Earth, Wind, and Fire already is basically an early dance group band because you know disco's very derivative for us so it's like and i, I don't know i just my, my mom loves that song so it's like it's one of those ones that you put on and when you play september everybody is just happy that so. is yeah the ultimate dance dance record i mean that was early i mean if you if you put that on now and you sped it up a couple bpms and you added some synthetic drums it would sound like something maybe to you know yep. today i think this was yeah this is a no-brainer i mean it's know? such it's such a good song and to think that that song is I feel like 40 years. 40, I feel yeah. like you could be in the worst almost. mood and you put this song on, it's gonna make you happy. Yeah. Now there might be some grumps out there that might disagree, but it's a good song. It's, it's a really good. Okay, I have I have something that I wanted to share it to you guys. A little trivia about this song. Okay. So it was written by a couple of the band members. One of them was Willis Ali. Ali Willis. Let's just keep it as Willis. Um, and they wrote the song in a month. And in a month, Willis was initially bothered by the. Badia, badia. He yeah, was like, yeah. that he makes like no that part. sense. Yeah, okay. and he was like, what the fuck is this? Literally, he said that. <laughs> and um, then the, uh, the writer who was in charge of writing that little... Diddy. Uh-huh. Yeah. He said, um, who the fuck cares? <laughs> yes. In quotations. In quota who the fuck cares? And then Willis <laughs> Amen. said, you know what? I learned my greatest lesson ever in songwriting from him. I love it. Which was never let the lyric get in the way of the groove. Wow. Tay, that is like that's straight knowledge right there. That who cares? Who cares? There's literally no there's no rules in music. I mean there there I mean there is technically if you're thinking musical theory, but there really is no rules. And I think that the people that are like that, they might have broken a rule doing that, but I love that way of thinking. I think we've kind of tried to do that with our music yeah, too. I was gonna but ask you like during yeah. your creative process. Not saying we're on an earth, wind, and fire level, but I, I mean, in the, Eddie Van Halen, I literally just watched this, so it's funny we're talking about it. Eddie Van Halen said, it's music theory, not music fact, yes. and that hit me so hard, because I was like, whoa, that's so true, that's how we changed music over time, because, you know, Bach and whoever could sit down and play distinct music, but then they started breaking rules, and then the same thing happened with rock, they broke rules, and then the same thing happened with electronic music, they broke rules, so it's like, it's always actually how far you can bend it, and go beyond the actual, you know, facts and yep. theory. So it's it's exactly what you guys are saying, I think. And that's a, what you guys are doing. Yeah. We're trying, trying our hope best. So. Always, trying our best. Yeah. yeah, yeah. When you started, did you feel like you had to fit a certain pattern or follow a certain rule or? I think a little bit. It's, it's impossible to not have the influence, but right. it, I think that's okay. That's like, it's human and it's a good thing to be influenced by other things. That's how you become great, is you look at other great people and then you try and do your own version of that. And then eventually you hit, you know, in our case, we, I feel like, found a sound pretty early on because we had been prepared for it. Yeah. Right. It was easier for us 
to stay with a sound and find a sound tonally because we knew what we wanted going in. I think for when I started Party Fever, I, I was trying everything under the sun because I, I tried to be someone else that I wasn't. And so. you gotta you gotta start somewhere though, you know, and you gotta learn from your mistakes. Yeah. And then you gotta go and say, who the fuck cares? Yeah, absolutely. That's right. right. <laughs> That's so right. Here it is, guys. This is September by Earth, Wind, and Fire. He knows what's up. Go Lakers, yes, sir. Such a good tune. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you. Yeah, I appreciate you guys for being so vulnerable and open and sharing so much about you guys. Because, you know, I do my research, and all I see about Side Piece and both of you is, like, all these amazing charts that you're on and all these, like, streams, and which is <laughs> awesome. It's fantastic. But I'm like, I want to know who Nitty and Party are. You know, I want to know who Ricky and Dylan are, and I hope Get to so. the nitty gritty of it, you know? Yeah, <laughs> there you go. All pun intended. Ay. All right, well, that's it, guys. Thanks so much for being part of Truth and Tunes here on Dash, and- Thank you for having home. us. Yeah, thank you so much, that was fun. We'll be back. Adios. Adios. Yay. All right. Adios. Adios. Are you singing Mana? I am. I love Mana. Really? Yes. Don't mind. I